Hi everyone, Assalamu alaikum, namaste, sastri akal. You're watching the Aziza Show and my name is Fahim Khan. This week we're going to talk about something that uh, actually, um, like many topics that we discuss, um, is, is often not spoken about but needs to be. And that issue is racial profiling. So um, with me are guests Sharon Douglas and Nigel Berif. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I want to just, you know, cut to the chase and get straight into it. You know, we, we people hear the word racial profiling, but we don't really necessarily, I think, truly understand what it means. So maybe we could just do a quick introduction of yourselves first, and then we'll ju just jump right into it. Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> Thank you very much for inviting me to speak uh, this evening, Farheem. My name is Sharon Douglas. I am the past director of community investment at United Way. I currently am in a consultant role for United Way and have lived and worked in the region of Peel for a lot of years. Right. I even date myself. Um, <laughs> I also um, have focused on community development, community engagement, equity initiatives in the region and how we build um, a sense or a space for belonging and inclusion mm -hmm. and um, also focus on organizational change. Wonderful. So that's me. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so I'm welcome and thank you very much. <laughs> it's, I'm honored to be here with both of you and, <laughs> and, uh, and you know, I, I, I wear kind of two hats that, that that interweave each other. I'm a school teacher sure. um, by profession. I teach for the Toronto District School Board. Currently, I'm actually seconded out of the classroom and working with our teachers' union and uh, yep. helping to kind of um, or work with parents and teachers around pushing back against some of the cuts that we're seeing happening mm -hmm. in education. But right. and and. Um, but in my volunteer work, I'm also president of the Urban Alliance on Race Relations, and so for the past 45 years, we have been working. Um, Primarily around police civilian oversight, mm -hmm. um, but also doing lots of research and and um, we do panels and and educational types of workshops with people around how do we create that sense of belonging? How do right. we bring communities together? So it's, it's I'm very honored to be here today and, and having this conversation. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for being here. I, you know, when I thought about the topic, I, we couldn't have thought of anybody better to to speak about it. So. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what it is. Why don't we just define it first, first off. What, what, in your opinion, is racial profiling? So I looked it up, actually. And so the dictionary has a, state, uh, a definition that says it is a deliberate, I'm adding the word, intentional mm -hmm. act of targeting specific populations, mostly racialized populations. Right. Um, around a criminal offense or with criminal intent. Mm -hmm. And so historically, uh, for the black community across the country or across the states globally, uh, we've been targeted many, many over and over and over. And right. so this whole conversation around social, uh, I mean racial profiling, that has been given a lot of press time in the last number of years in the recent past mm. um, is a conversation that's necessary. It's a conversation that needs to go deeper and push and explore to understand the impact of it mm. on uh, communities. Mm. I'll pause. Yeah, no, I, I, I would definitely agree. That's the, 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 the um, definition of it. And I think the way that it plays out, for mm -hmm. instance, yeah. You know, um, um, as a school teacher, I would coach, you know, after school basketball mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, these students would be going home to school and, you know, in the neighborhood where North Etobicoke, Rexdale right. is, you know, one of those, one of the neighborhoods that are underserved, I guess, is the, is the code word that we like to use for, for um, neighborhoods that have high immigrant population that are usually underserved by public services. Right. Mm -hmm. But with that said, you know, the kids would go be going home from school and the next day they would come, you know, say, you know, to brief I you know, we weren't doing anything but the police were just watching us and then they actually stopped us and and made us give us give them their information I said well yeah. what did you do I said we were just walking home yeah. and so you know those are those are the kinds of things that happen um, that that you know that that really create distrust between right. you know the you know the community and, and police officers right mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you, uh, Sharon, do you have any other examples of what racial profiling kind of looks like? Um, we look at it in stores. I'll tell you a quick story. Mm -hmm. My son, my youngest son, we were at one of the malls here in Peel years and years ago when he was about probably 15, 16, going shopping. Mm -hmm. And so as we were going through the store, we were looking for running shoes, um, he passed by somebody and I said to him, 
you didn't say excuse me, son. Why didn't you say excuse me? And he said, but mom, I actually don't have to say excuse me all the time because when people see young black men come in, they just kind of move out the way. Right. He said, so let's watch this. So we started walking through the mall right. and we were doing this little mini kind of thing to watch and see if people just sort of parted ways mm. as they saw him approaching. And so when we look at that or when we go into stores, right. he says, I leave my hands swinging, I leave my phones in my pocket, I'm open, I'm yes. sort of really pleasant. So the, the, there's a whole mental and emotional shift that happens for our youth mm -hmm. because they're targeted. And, and so when you walk in a store, whether you're standing at a bus stop, whether you're in a classroom, whether you're driving a car, right. like it, it's, it's real. This is not something that we as the black community have just made up. Right. This is a real issue. Yeah. yeah. And, and what do you think the impact of, of this is? I mean, you've talked a little bit about it, Sharon, now in terms mm -hmm. of individuals, but usually collectively, how do you feel that this type of, you know, um, that this particular issue has an impact on our communities? Well, I, I think Sharon had brought it up before, that sense yeah. of belonging and that, you know, you, you don't have that with, with many members within yeah. our community. We don't feel as if right. it's okay. I mean, yeah. just recently, the Toronto Poli the, the TTC, Tran mm -hmm. um, Toronto Transit Commission, mm -hmm. yes. released information about that demonstrated mm -hmm. disproportionately young black males are stopped right. for not paying their fares or mm -hmm. to check to see if they've yes. paid their fares. Right. And it was absurd to think, for three dollars, you're actually collecting private information of citizens, and that based it's on their ridiculous. race, yeah. and that and that you're it's showing that yeah. you're actually demonstrating that you know mm -hmm. you're at risk if you even take public transit right. in our city. So right. it, it's about the the sense of belonging, the trust, and the feeling as if you actually belong within yeah. the society right. that has been that's been torn apart right. um, based on uh, what we've seen as as carding and 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 mm -hmm. the the way that the black community is treated by law enforcement. Right. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about that? What, what mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously we've talked about the mistrust, right, or of, between law enforcement and, um, and the black community, but like how, how does that um, play out? I know there's been some efforts to do some advocacy. What mm -hmm. kind of, um, mm -hmm. you know, how do you, how do you feel about that? What's been happening? <laughs> Well, of course, you've seen all the demonstrations around uh, Cardin and Toronto street checks and Peel. Right. Um, the pushback around that, the ability to, or the opportunity to get the police to even acknowledge right. that this happens. And, that, and I can't quote the numbers right now, but I know we do have a report from Peel Police that speaks to the number of black people that were disproportionately stopped mm -hmm. and stopped randomly and stopped because you look like somebody. Right. You know, there's a crime that happened a block away and you're walking down the street and you're liable to get stopped because yep. you look like. And so every black person looks the same. Every black male looks the same. Everyone fits the bill of six foot one or something like this. And right. so, you know, that's the impact where, you know, for our, for our youth and our male youth in particular, mm -hmm. it's, it's the fair, it's the anger, it's frustration, right. it's humiliation, it's embarrassment that, you know, I've been born here, I brought up here, I go to school here, yeah. I live here, and yet I can't walk down the streets of my neighborhood yeah. or my community yeah. and not be stopped yeah. because I look like yeah. somebody. Yeah. Like, that's really I can't funny. even really actually talk about it sanely. No, exactly. I, 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 it's, it's beyond infuriating. Yeah. It, it's so wrong. And it's like something, it's one of those issues that just, you know, it just, it feels like we're consistently, like, I don't know if we've made any progress or, or like, have we made progress? I guess that's a big question to ask, right? Right. I mean, I, I don't know if you want to bring up the, the, um, the Ontario Human Rights Commission well, sure, and, and sure. their report, the internal yeah. report they did just back in December, right. which yeah. demonstrates that even though blacks make up 8.8% .8 yes. of the population, yeah. 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 we're uh, almost 60 times um, more, we have 60% more deadly encounters mm -hmm. with the police. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that, uh, you know, there's 30% more uh, chance of police use of force um, cases that resulted in serious injury mm -hmm. um, with 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 black, brown, and indigenous indigenous right. people. So, mm -hmm. right. so it it is it has deadly effects right. on our on, on our people. So, mm -hmm. it is um, 
we have to figure, we have, to, it needs to stop immediately. Yeah, the government, sure. the last government said yeah. it did. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what's going to happen under this current government yeah. now. Right. Um, but yeah. but it, it just, it needs to stop yeah. immediately. For sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. It need, it, uh, like, it's time to finish talking. There's enough research. Yeah. There's enough data. Yes. Uh, they didn't have data. Now we have data. Yeah. There's enough research that talks about the impact, the consequences. Right. You look at our prison system, our jail system. Yeah. You'll see it. Yeah. You can step out this front door here and walk down Dixie or Drew Road and ask any kid, yeah. any black youth about their experience. Yeah. And so the conversation that we want to build trust with mm -hmm. the black community is much deeper than saying we want to build trust. Right. You know, right. there's a lot more to unpack in that conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's a deep history and it's a history not just of our current youth population, right. but us. So we as parents who had our own experience in with policing right. and what that looked like, my right. parents who had, right. my, it's a it's just, huge, you know, it's, it's generations exactly. yeah, yeah. of black people across yeah. this country right. who have experienced, as you know, I'm from Nova Scotia. Yeah. We have long history and stories of policing right. in Nova mm. Scotia, you know, mm. and racism. Yeah. So. yeah, this is so important, the point she's bringing up, Sharon's bringing up because, you know, really black people have been here before the Canada was Canada, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it, it's right. always yeah. made it seem as if we were somehow just arrived, but, right. yeah. you know, we have always, That's we've right. been part of the fabric of this country, we've mm -hmm. fought for, you know, this country, we, mm -hmm. you know, we've suffered through, you know, the depression with this country, right. we went to World War Two, II, Three, yeah. or yeah. Two, One and Two yeah. for this country, so, you mm -hmm. know, to, then to turn around and, and you see the stats, as, yeah. as Jaren's pointed out, right. that, that, we're, that our children, and, and, and even as adults, mm -hmm. are treated differently. Mm -hmm. Yes. that we have more deadly encounters mm -hmm. when it comes to law enforcement, mm -hmm. it has to stop. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a quick break and then okay. we'll be back and we'll be back right after this. Hi everyone. Uh, Welcome back. We're just talking about racial profiling. And so before the break, we were just talking about sort of, you know, the impact of, of uh, racial profiling on individuals and the community. But what are some of the consequences that, you know, um, results from, from this type of thing? Okay. Um, <laughs> so I think it spills over. Right. It spills over, as I mentioned, into our lives as consumers, right. as we walk through malls and yep. stores and yep. shopping and our ability or, or that sense of feeling you're being watched For sure. and you know, continually marginalized. Um, it spills over into our education systems mm -hmm. and the perceptions and the lack of understanding of who we are right. as a community and the people and what that means for our children within the school system. And mm -hmm. so we may use different language in, within the educational institutions, right. but it's actually still a profiling. Right. There is, there is a, a, which is huge, and I, I, hope, I hate to generalize, but there's this overall perception of what people think black youth are, mm -hmm. and, and they clump everybody together. Mm -hmm. and, and so when we look at that, how that impacts their ability to participate in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, we look at our graduation rates. We look at who gets streamed into programs. Like, you're a teacher, so I'm gonna yeah. let you speak more to that sure. part of it and, yeah. and what you see. Yeah, you no, know? Mm -hmm. yeah. we know from the data is already pretty clear about yeah. um, the disproportionality of mm -hmm. children from the black, brown, and indigenous communities, graduation rates, mm -hmm. right? right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that starts, you know, that the, the pushing out of, of education starts from as early as kindergarten that right. we see, you know, the kids that are, you know, falling behind or not getting the same kinds of supports as their kids from other mm -hmm. um, other racial backgrounds mm -hmm. and then you know and so so if you're not graduating or you're you're not going to in this society going to university or getting a trade then it makes it very difficult for you to be able to like survive for sure right for and, sure and, absolutely and, and and so you know that's I think education that we see we, we've talked about the within the prison system how there, again there's disproportional um, numbers of, of black and brown and indigenous yeah. um, folks that are that are in the jail in the jail system and and I think we we also have to pay attention to 
the broader context of the you know anti-black racism and, and Islamophobia mm -hmm. that has been really um, apparent, <laughs> you know, in the media yes. from the dog whistle politics yes. that we're seeing from our from our politicians, for sure. you know, and and uh, you know whether it's the the forty fifth president not being able to like disavow yes. white supremacy to right, even having our, our own premier, yes. um, you know, uh, standing on stage with Faith Goldie, mm -hmm. uh, a known, mm -hmm. you know, white supremacist yes. Yes. who finished yes. third yes. in the in the in the mayoral race. That we yeah. we do have to like have a deep look at what's happening in our society and why it is that all of a sudden that these racists are coming from underneath their rocks and 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 has established themselves as part of our society. Mm -hmm. And so you know. Those are all, I think, um, we have to, you know, be paying attention yeah. to, to, to all of that. And, and how do these public institutions that, that we pay our taxes to yeah, yeah, are, yeah. again, you know, feeding into all of, you know, the racism and Islamophobia yeah. um, that, that, that we're seeing. No, for sure. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because, mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of the, the challenge, right? Like when I ran in 2015, that was part mm -hmm. of the reason was like people are being so irresponsible, mm -hmm. you know, when they're in positions of leadership, mm -hmm. they don't realize that real impact that it has mm -hmm. on people like us mm -hmm. who, you know, can walk down the street and get hurt, you know, physically or otherwise, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. chose to say something yeah. just for, for a certain number of votes, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. just, it's so irresponsible and it's, it's mm -hmm. unfortunate that we, you know, know continue to have to deal with it as a real struggle on the ground mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to also say like you know Sharon and, and Nigel you were both talking about how like you know it's the black community but you're right it's also you know the South Asian community there's also right. intersections with Islamophobia right mm -hmm. like I know yeah. I always make sure I get a receipt before I leave the shop right like yeah. I will always do that yeah. I'll never oh you yeah. don't need one no no it's yeah. fine I will make sure I have it in my hand <laughs> as I'm exiting, right? Absolutely. Like, yeah. it's yeah. so important yeah. you know or like yeah. I'm always like conscious in the stores as well yeah. of like yeah who's watching me or like mm -hmm. what I'm doing or mm -hmm. who's following or you know yeah. like there, those are really real struggles that we have to deal with yeah. mm -hmm. and and I know that even when I was in in um, when I was in campaigning actually right. um, I, I don't know if I shared this with you before but I, it, I generally haven't had the chance to really talk about it but it I actually was standing at a street corner in in my riding where I was putting up a street sign and fixing the sign with my name on it and the police cruiser like came up to the t mm -hmm. t to where I was and he, there was this like intimidation tactic. He wouldn't make eye contact with me. And then he just said, ma'am, what business do you have in this neighborhood? And funny thing was, my, my office was around the corner with this huge picture of me on the corner. <laughs> but, wow. but it just so happened that that was like, you know, the wealthy side of the street, right? Versus yeah. the, the subsidized side of the yeah. street. Yeah. And, uh, and so I just said, you know, sir, like, yeah. this sign's actually mine. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, my yeah. name's on this. And he just sort of was like, okay. And then he just, he just left. And I, I, it was interesting because it was, it was actually very humbling because I was like, wow, like, you know, yeah. even though I'm running to be yeah. a federal MP, right. yeah. it doesn't matter because yeah. at the end of the day, I'm still a woman with a hijab and yeah. I'm still being looked at in a particular yeah. way, right? right? It's, it's, yeah. it's quite a challenge. And I wonder sometimes in the work that we do it, and if we look right across the country, we see it's the exact same population. Right. So I often ask, Blacks in Ontario, Indigenous in Ontario, low-income whites or mm -hmm. low-income people across, you know, Ontario, South Asian, anybody racialized that fits in there. Right. If you go out west, same populations. Yep. You go east, same populations. Same populations yep. You go north, same. So at what point in time do we ask the question, do we actually think that every one of these populations right across our country are actually like either not intelligent enough to get their lives together or have all these major issues everywhere they go across the country. Right. And we begin to look at systems. Yes. And we begin to look at how do we need to change systems if they're having this huge impact. Here's the evidence right across the country. Mm -hmm. No matter where you go in yeah. Canada, yeah. it's the same three basic populations that are targeted and impacted. Yeah. So. When do we stop saying, oh, we need more evidence? Mm -hmm. We need more evidence. Mm -hmm. We have the evidence. Mm -hmm. You can go to Toronto, you can go to Scarborough, you can go to Halifax, you can go to Calgary, you can go yeah. to Winnipeg, you can go to Ottawa yeah. with Abdi as we were just, yeah. Yeah. was it Abdi? Abdi yeah. Rahman, yeah, yeah, yeah. That we were just in speaking Ottawa. about. You can go to yeah. anywhere in this corner yeah. of this country yeah. and find the exact same populations. Mm -hmm. Our experiences mm -hmm. are the same as we move from province to province. So when do we, 
stop pointing fingers at us. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that we are, and I hate to use the word victim, but for lack of the word victims, right. who have to actually prove, oh, you are doing wrong to us. Right. Yes. It's like telling somebody, mm -hmm. it, and this is probably a really bad analogy. Oh, let me think of another one. But like say, you know, somebody was raped mm -hmm. and yet you have to prove, you have to prove to Victim them. Blaming. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to convince yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. You know? that this is yeah. actually wrong. Yeah. yeah. Most ridiculous, yeah. yeah. You know, so. Yeah. I think the other two, the other piece too, like the, the as we're talking about systems of oppression or systems, I think thinking, looking at the, the growing gap between the rich and, yeah. and, and the rest of us, yes. right? And, yes. and I think, and that's why you know the racism piece is at play, right? Where right. you have you know fo folks that are you know that should share the same class interests, yes. you know, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden you have young white boys that are like getting up, you know, uh, screaming at and 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 using racial epithets at you know brown and, and black people, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And so I think you know as we see you know more and more the the wealthy you know hoarding billions of dollars and, and wealthy mm -hmm. individuals right and then you know and then you have politicians coming in and giving them even more tax breaks right. and then mm -hmm. saying that we need to reduce and cut back on, social on public programs. services so yes. the social projects and, and right yeah. whether that be you know OSAP for our high school kids yeah. go high school kids yeah. or right. or you know the, the university, the university yeah, kids that yeah. went yeah. Their, their lockout to, or walkout today yeah. right yeah. or you see it at, in yeah. the attack on on public education where yeah. they're increasing class sizes yeah right Yes, so yes. we saw that when they rolled back the, the you know fifteen dollars instead of giving people fifteen dollars an hour, That's we rolled right. it back to fourteen dollars right. an hour, yeah. which we right. know yeah. has a primarily effect on black and brown right. um, yes. right. women, um, commu female yeah. communities with okay. single women households. Yeah. So yeah. this continues to be a tax, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a financial attack, it's a racial attack on it's like you know adding these barriers, right? Well, creating an underclass. We're, layer we're continuing layer. to create, trying to create this this yeah. underclass. So yeah. you know, yeah. we've been talking, you know. I'm always in adm admiration of Sharon and the work that you guys have done at the United Way, and I know that the programs that you guys have been mm -hmm. trying to do to empower communities, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that that is the one of you know, one of the areas that we're going to have to do. But right. there's yeah. also it's, there's also a political piece where yeah. we have to continue yes. to talk to people. Yeah. I'm loving the idea this this week of of um, the open open mosques or go visit a mosque yes. week, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like how yeah. you know yeah. it's such a simple thing, but yeah. yes, how important important that yes, is yes. you know that we that we st break down these barriers yes, yes, that is being bridges, created yeah. and yeah, build right. bridges between communities those are going to be really important pieces so we yeah. realize you know what mm -hmm. yeah you just want the best for your child you're just working the Everybody hardest else. so you, your yeah. child can have a better life that's, yeah. right. that's what we all want yeah. Yeah. that's what this is about yes yeah. this is about creating space and, and living life with dignity and being safe right, right. regardless of who you are regardless mm -hmm. of what you look like or the color yeah. of our skin I, mm -hmm. we're just human beings at the end yeah. of the day and mm -hmm. we should be able to that's right. you know and that's our Canadian live, narrative. Yeah. That's our narrative. We're proud of that. Wherever yeah. we go around the world, we talk about how wonderful Canada is, and right. which it is, and how you can come here and you know pray how you want to pray and go where you want to go. And right. there's movement, and and we compare ourselves to our American part, or you know neighbors, and and say over there. Yeah. But we don't look over here and talk about what those impacts are. For and sure. as beautiful as we are, because I've never lived anywhere else, quite frankly, <laughs> quite honestly. I agree. I go visit, but I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't come back. Oh yeah. yeah, this is oh, sure. this yeah. is my home. For sure. It's beautiful. But there's work to be done. For sure. And so let's not get caught up in our own narrative or mm -hmm. our own story that oh it's so beautiful mm -hmm. you know and and, and, and ignore that. Yeah. that widening gap that yeah. you were speaking about yeah. and you know what Nigel yeah. referred to as as we look at you know yeah. where you know those who have have more and those who don't are continuing yeah. to have less mm -hmm. for sure and that means something well, I want to take a moment to say thank you so much. And firstly, we've run out of time. I know we could have continued the conversation. Oh, yeah. There's so much We're to talk about. Right? Started, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. We'll have to bring you back on, and hopefully, okay. we can continue the conversation again. We can keep thank building you. bridges. So for thank you. Sure. Thanks thank for you us. so much. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Thanks so much. We're looking forward to seeing you next week when we talk about another topic that's really. Um, uh, I would say interesting and very important, but I'll keep it to that. Take care. Uh -huh.